So I have dealt with hundreds of projects with archives dating back as early as the 1940s. I've never once had a bad analog tape, period. Splices are a little bit different matter. These have held together fairly well, but they've become sticky. So once we've taken apart the splice, I need to take off the old residue. I'm just using cotton swabs and alcohol. So when cleaning this residue off of the tape itself, it will remove the back coating if it does have a back coating. That doesn't really matter because the splice covers the back coating anyway. I'm actually feeling the tape to see if any adhesive is transferred to the other layer. There it is. When the adhesive gets transferred over to the tape, it creates a sticky spot, so when it runs through the guide, you hear a little bump. This splice just came apart. I remember one time I was hired to restore an entire certain musician's archive. Every time I hit a splice, the tape just fell apart. They used masking tape. That was funny. As time-consuming as this process can be, it's almost therapeutic. I'm re returning a piece of history back to its original condition. The way I'm taking these apart is I bend the splice back a little bit like this, and that reveals just a tiny crease, the tiniest edge on the tape, and just peel it loose with my fingernail. Same thing with the tape side. Just like that. So I do have a tiny bit of residue on the oxide layer of this tape. I'm using the same technique, just a little bit of alcohol, lightly rubbing. The oxide layer is quite a bit more resilient than the back coating. I can take off this oxide if I'm too aggressive, but a little gentle scrubbing. Uh, I'm trying to do my scrubbing from the center toward the edge so that if I do rub off any oxide, it doesn't rub off a strip, it's just a tiny little spot. The way I'm winding this is called rocking the transport. I'm hitting rewind and fast forward alternately so that it doesn't get too fast. And that way I reduce the chance of damage. So I had another splice come apart on me while I was rewinding. And I can't tease it loose with this trimmer, so... Just take off the flange. And there it is. I'm going to have to replace this leader because it's broken right in the middle. And while I'm here, I want to point out something. This contains tones. Not all of the tapes I handle have these, but they're extremely useful for mastering. What they do is allow me to make a quick check of the uh, head alignment as well as the electronic calibration to make sure everything sounds the way it was intended. That's the last splice. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make any adjustments according to the tones at the head of this tape. I'll make a copy in a single run from beginning to end, and hopefully this will be good for another 35 years or so.